DALI 3 is finally rolling out to more ChatGPT Plus users. I just got access today and there's an option to get it for free if you don't have ChatGPT Plus. Now, with DALI 3, you could generate images just by typing in text, but now you could do it right inside of ChatGPT. There is not a different platform that you need to go to. But what DALI 3 does that makes the biggest difference is you could actually type in any version of a prompt and ChatGPT will help you really refine that prompt. So you no longer have to come up with the perfect prompt to get really good images out of DALI. And you could go back and forth inside of ChatGPT to really edit and refine that image. And you could even add text. Now, let me show you the free version of it I mentioned. So Microsoft, the company that owns Bing.com, the search engine, actually owns half of OpenAI, the company that owns ChatGPT. So because of that, if you go to Bing.com slash new, press chat now, it will bring you to the AI chatbot here. Under the more creative mode, you could actually create images here inside of Bing. And that uses now Dolly 3. And here I'll just jump into the blog post because they have some examples here. So this is basically Dolly 2, this is Dolly 3. But here's a prompt. I'm gonna just copy this prompt and I'll paste this here into Bing. And this uses the Bing image creator here, but you'll see in a second that it's actually using Dolly 3 behind the scenes. It gives you a little logo here. So let me let this finish up so you can see I got four different images here and right there, powered by Dolly 3. So it's made by Bing image creator, but powered by Dolly 3. The only thing is I'll show you the difference inside of ChatGPT, it actually helps you see the prompts that it's coming up with. So you don't have to come up with a prompt like this. You could just say something much simpler than that and ChatGPT will do the prompting. But the side-by-side -side comparison is actually very close on the output side. The prompting though is very useful. So I'll go back to ChatGPT to show you the rest of what's possible. And if you don't have access to what I'm about to show you inside of ChatGPT, again, you could use Bing here completely for free. And this is based on a hundred fast generations I believe you could do per day. And then it just kind of slows it down, but it's really unlimited on how many of these you could generate inside of Bing. So inside of ChatGPT, first you need ChatGPT Plus in order to get Dolly 3. And it's under the ChatGPT 4 dropdown. So this GPT 4 dropdown, you'll see Dolly 3. You actually don't have to turn it on in settings like these other options. I have to turn these on inside of my settings menu. This one just appears. So this is again rolling out. So as I'm recording this, not everyone has it, even if you have the paid version. So if you don't see it here, that just means you don't have it and you have to wait a little bit more. There's no way of basically forcing them to give you this, unfortunately. They just roll this out a little bit slower sometimes, just like any other updates they usually do. So as long as I have this checked on here next to it, as soon as I type in a prompt, it's going to access Dolly 3 in the background. So here's how simple this is, and I'll show you a couple of different examples and some tips here that you need to know about to use this more effectively. So I'm just gonna say, create an image of a moon with a smiley face, and look what happens with Dolly 3 up here. It actually starts crafting the perfect prompt for you. So here's one, here's another. I could see illustration of a cartoon moon, photo of a full moon in the night sky, oil painting of a large detailed moon, vector graphic, of a minimalistic moon. So these are all created inside of ChatGPT, and then it's gonna power Dolly 3 to create them, and here I got four images. Now you can see, it gave me four completely different versions of this, so then I could refine it further. Here is what's really interesting about this. So this is how I count these. This is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. So if I want more like number three, I could say, I like three, but make it even more smiley. So it took number three, which is this one, the oil painting, and it gave me a much more smiley version of this. And a couple of things you should note. The image here could be downloaded with this little icon here. So if you press this, it's gonna put it right inside of your download folder, and it's available for all the creations. So you don't have to actually get it to up-res anything for you. You could just press download over here. Now, let me show you the size because that's important. Right now, this created it in a square format and the dimensions are 1024 by 1024. So that's a square shape. This is your resolution here. And the file size is 1.5 megabytes. So it's a pretty good resolution, but you could actually change this resolution with a simple prompt. So I could say, for example, make a horizontal version 
And here's a horizontal version. So let me download this to show you the file size and the dimensions. You could also do vertical. So if you ask for a vertical version, it just flips these two numbers. So it becomes 1024 by 792. And this one you can see is a bigger file, 2.7 megabytes. So that's a really quick way to actually change the dimensions here with a single prompt. And I asked how many resolutions it could make. So those are the three different resolutions, your square, your wide angle, the horizontal and the vertical, the tall version of it. And these are all the different dimensions by pixel size. Now for this next prompt, I'm actually going to take a prompt that I've previously made inside of mid journey. So I said, create this and I typed in this prompt over here. Let me generate this. And then I want to show you a couple other tips here that you could use to refine this a little bit more. And here's four different images that I got over here. I could click on any of them to see it bigger here. I could copy any of the prompts that I created from this page and I could always press download right over here. This is going to download it to my computer from there and I could do this with all four. Now let me copy this prompt and let's take it to Bing here. Let's see what Bing comes up with. So I'm going to say create this and I'm going to type in that prompt. Let's see how close this is. So let's look at the difference. This is what Bing gave me. Again, it says powered by Dolly 3 and this is what chat GPT gave me. So this is a little bit more contrasty. Uh, the characters are a li little bit different. People are seated at different positions. So you could refine this further. For example, I could then take this prompt and say, hey, don't have a table, for example, or have people standing around in the library. I could say reduce the number of robots. Maybe I just want the one robot. It looks like you created a little R2D2 type Star Wars character over here. And again, you could download these from Bing as well just by pressing this right here, or you could press customize here. And this actually takes you to Microsoft Designer, which is really interesting. Microsoft Designer is a whole different tool that lets you actually refine images and create different graphics with it. So using this in Bing is kind of really interesting. As you can see, here is giving me some more options for prompts or turning it into a poster, for example, here. You could see all these different types of graphics it gives me. But inside of ChatGPT again, I could refine this by adding text to it. So I could say add text to number one, and this will add a text to this first image here. This one was created in the horizontal format by default, but if I want to make it square, I could say make, give me a square version here. Now adding text before was just not possible at all. It did a terrible job. Dolly 2 did a bad job. Mid Journey did a bad job, but now it's getting a whole lot better. There we go. The future is here. Very nice, right? No typos. This is the best part of this platform is you could refine every image here with a simple prompt and it will design that prompt for you in a way that ChatGPT and Dolly understand it best. Now, one thing to note about Dolly 3 inside of ChatGPT, it actually has very strict copyright rules. So I said create a Pixar looking character. If you ask it anything that has any copyright issues, it's going to basically try and then stop and it's going to say you can't do that sorry i can't do that because of uh, content policy restrictions which is copyright issues so this is one thing that you just have to deal with inside of chat gpt as of right now they have very strict copyrights and you can't also create things in a certain style so that's something you could do in mid journey for example you could say create this in a Salvador Dali style, and this won't be able to do that. But if I take the exact same prompt that ChatGPT basically gave me an error message on, and I take it to Bing, somehow Bing could do exactly that. Illustration of a Pixar style character exploring a dense jungle, and it created one for me. Back inside of ChatGPT though, I just basically removed Pixar, created 3D character in a jungle, and it created some for me. And as far as how many images you could create inside of ChatGPT, the limit right now, from my testing is same as the GPT-4 limit, which is 50 messages every three hours. So if I pick Dolly 3, again, I'm gonna cap out here, especially if I use these in combination, I still have this 50 message. That's not just exclusive to Dolly 3, it's just exclusive to all of chat GPT usage at the time that I'm recording this video. And I also recommend checking out Mid Journey if you haven't. That also is one of the leading text to image generation platforms. So I have a beginner's tutorial. So that way you could compare what you're getting out of Dolly 3 versus Mid Journey. The link is included in the description as well. I'll see you on the next video.